So which is better, higher frame rates or higher resolutions? Actually, the answer is frame rates are better. Why is frame rates better? Well, for one thing, it reduces input lag on your controller. Higher resolutions means that your GPU has to do more work in order to render a frame. This is why game consoles mostly run at 30 FPS when they're doing 4K. When game developers tell you that it's more cinematic, it's because they're basically BSing you. They don't want to say the game console can't do 4K 60 FPS because it takes twice as long to produce a 4K frame than it does at, at 60 FPS than it does at 30 FPS. It takes twice as long. Now, there are some games that can run on consoles at 4K at 60 FPS. There are some that can, and there are a lot of them that can't. Or they will run at a lower resolution than 4K and bump up the frame rates to get the frame rates higher. Now, there is a new technology, actually two new technologies, that have come out in the past uh, years or so that can potentially and actually are making it possible for lower end machines to run at higher resolutions with better frame rates. These technologies are called DLSS and Fidelity FX. And there's also another one from Microsoft called DirectML. Now the way they both work is NVIDIA's DLSS is a completely proprietary technology that is specific to NVIDIA cards. It doesn't work on anything else. It doesn't work on consoles. It doesn't work on um, internet machines, but, but NVIDIA cards. And what is it? what it does is that it trains an AI algorithm how to upscale an image to a higher resolution let's say to 1080p or to 4k and it renders the game internally at a lower resolution and then upscales that using machine learning to a higher resolution while being able to give you a higher frame rate fidelity fidelity fx basically does the same thing except it does the machine learning part near the, the AI machine learning part near the end of the cycle. And Microsoft has their own technology called DirectML, which basically does very much the same thing. And it can be like Fidelity FX, it can be used on any graphics card other than simply NVIDIA cards or AMD. A lot of games have been taking advantage of this technology. One is Cyberpunk 2077, which is notorious for having some issues on some systems for, with performance. And utilizing DLSS and Fidelity FX really does improve the frame rates. In fact, I've been using it on my system and it's really done wonders for the frame rates. But there's one area where these technologies are being coming a game changer, and that is virtual reality. Now, VR does require higher resolutions. That's to get rid of the screen door effect that you see sometimes in VR, where you're so close to the screen, you can actually see the individual pixels and you can see the, the lines in between the pixels. I don't see it, but some people can. It's because of my vision. But some people can see these lines. And so a lot of headsets are higher resolution, like some of the Pimax ones are 4K. The HTC Vive I am using is 1440p per eye. 
Same thing goes for the Samsung Odyssey, which is a Windows Mixed Reality headset. And I believe also the uh, Valve Index is the same resolution, it's 1440p. And this runs at 90 hertz, and the Oculus Quest can operate at over 100, depending on the game. In VR, frame rates actually matter way more than resolution, though. The resolution, you know, it's good for getting rid of the screen door effect, if you can see it. But you need the higher frame rate. That's because you need to use the higher frame rate to mitigate motion sickness. That is extremely important in VR. And recently, uh, a few couple of games, actually one that I know of for certain, has leveraged the DLSS in order to improve frame rates in VR, and that's No Man's Sky. Hello Games found a way to enable DLSS in VR. And there's a mod, and I'll have a link in the description below, a mod that allows you to use AMD's Fidelity FX in VR games. In fact, you can use it in VR chat, which is where I'm at now. And uh, I've used it in a couple other VR games. I used it in No Man's Sky on VR and a few others, and it does wonders for the frame rate. Now, one thing to understand immediately, this is not a magic bullet that will allow you to do VR on a potato. If you have a machine with an Intel graphics card, you're probably not going to be able to do, um, if, you're, if you're just using the embedded a Intel GPU, you're probably not going to be able to do VR. Maybe some VR apps, if you use like maybe a Windows Mixed Reality headset, you might be able to do that. But we're not, you're not going to be able to do like Half-Life Alex or something like that on an embedded system. Maybe an APU from AMD, maybe one of their better APUs, possibly. As I said, it's not a magic bullet that will allow any machine to do VR. What it, will, what it will do is that it will allow you to achieve better frame rates in virtual reality, which mitigates motion sickness. And this is very important. So installing the mod that was, and I'll, as I said again in the description below, I'll have the link to the SourceForge page where you can grab it. The mod replaces the OpenVR DLL that it comes with every Steam VR game. You have to use this with Steam VR. And you just you rename the original OpenVR DLL file and then you copy this new file in. And it also has a configuration file. And in the configuration file you can change the level of upsampling that it does. Now there is a trade-off with all upsampling methods. And that trade-off is visual quality. If you go more aggressively, image is going to look a little fuzzier than it usually does. But your frame rate is going to be higher. Now you can do a, a balanced or you can do a, a better where you render at or this render to the screen or your headset is 100% and you drop it down to like 70% uh, for the internal render rendering. You can do that. And that will greatly improve your frame rates. So if, you, if you're having trouble in, let's say, here in VRChat. VRChat is notorious for having certain frame rate issues because the, a lot of the maps are community built. They're not built by the creators of VR chat. And so some of them may not be fully optimized, so to speak. It's all done in... It, yes, it's done in Unity, which is not a intensive engine at all. Well, it can be. Uh, in the hands of the right developer, but some maps can be a bit laggy if they have a lot of geometry in them. If 
devil if they're pretty intense geometry and there are a few here in vr chat that do have that so if you use this mod you can get better frame rates and that will help mitigate some of the motion sickness that you might experience if you get it i have never gotten it in vr but there are people who do people who can't experience vr because of it and higher frame rates will make it so that they can at least experience VR for a while. So these technologies are a big boom to virtual reality, which is not going anywhere. It's not dying. There's, it's a billion dollar industry now. There are dozens of headsets currently in development. Facebook's become a massive player in VR, which speaking of which there's a uh, there is an antitrust suit against them actually a, a couple of them and that could affect their position in VR really they've become they they become the top VR people in the market right now and that's becoming a problem because they're buying up studios and they're making all their games exclusive to the Quest 2 that's becoming an issue uh, a lot of people are worrying that there may not be enough games coming out for other VR platforms and there will be other platforms in fact Valve is reportedly working on a standalone VR headset that will run Steam VR games and they could use a, a slightly more powerful hardware than what they got in the Steam Deck to do that and it's actually doable and since it's using AMD hardware it can use Fidelity FX to render at a high resolution and internally render at a lower resolution getting better frame rates and that can be tuned per game in the driver so that it gets the best image quality with the best frame rate since it's a fixed set of hardware and it will still be PC games. Anyway, as I said, this is not a magic bullet that will make, you know, really, really low end machines capable of doing VR. Like you're a business machine with an Intel graphics card is not going to be able to do this. But if you have a higher end APU or if you have like a GTX 1050 Ti, you should be able to do VR. Or if you have a, a 2050 Ti, or a 1060, or what I have, which is a uh, RX 5600 XT, you can do VR better than you could before. Anyway, I'm the professor. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.